All right, college football is different today than it's ever been, and I think that landscape is going to continue to change. Texas and Oklahoma joining the SEC. I've got Alabama insider Drew DeArmond on to talk a little bit about it. Uh, are, are Alabama fans excited about the Longhorns and Sooners joining the SEC? Does it add to the conference prestige, or do they kind of see it as an unnecessary challenge to making winning even harder in the SEC? Where, where do they, maybe somewhere in the middle, where do they lie with this? I think it's more toward the middle. I think they're more excited than anything, though. I don't think they're there's trepidation i think it's a new challenge um you know they it, certainly it was a it was a transition uh, back over you know 20 plus years ago back in 92 when arkansas and south carolina came into the league and they didn't really have any connection but i think everybody quickly adjusted uh certainly uh, i think it was probably even uh, i don't think there's been as much trepidation as when it was crazy when Texas A&M and Missouri joined. Yeah. Missouri had no ties to the South. So I think they've gotten used to this by now. Everybody understands it's a changing climate. Um, and now it's going to enhance the league in every sport, but especially in football. I mean, Oklahoma and Texas are two great brands. Uh, you're going to get a chance to go to Norman. You're going to get a chance. They've already been to Texas. It was kind of ironic. Greg Byrne. Uh, you know, was uh, kind of his vision to start uh, scheduling these big time matchups because at the time they were trying to beef up their uh, home schedule and also play big time away games instead of playing. Uh, Nick Saban kind of revolutionized the sport when he started doing the neutral field stuff back in 08 when they played Clemson in Atlanta. They started doing that all the time for TV and for recruiting. But then it got to the point where with the SEC network, you're trying to fill your stands, man. You, you want to sell tickets, and that's why they started. They wanted to start playing, and that's why they're going to Wisconsin to try to get the fans excited about playing and going different places. They went to, uh, you know, uh, Austin, Texas. It was a heck of a game. We all know it was a twenty to nineteen Alabama win in the last seconds with Bryce Young. Now you get to go and see these guys every three or four years. Uh, you're going to get to play either in Austin or they're going to come to you. It was a great game in uh, in Tuscaloosa last year where uh, Texas won that game. I think the fan base is energized. I think they're excited. And don't forget, when Bob Stoops still had it rolling at OU in the early 2000s, they wow. came to Alabama and won. And then Alabama went to Norman and under the in the Franchoni era. And then, with my, and of course, uh, Mike, Mike Shula coached the, uh, the, the uh, other game. But they were able to play, you know, Oklahoma – you know, a couple of times and, and, uh, you know, it was, and, and, and pardon me, Franchoni actually coached both those games, but again, Alabama, uh, was able to, they, 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 because I think there's a lot of mutual respect, especially between the Alabama and Oklahoma fan bases. And, you know, there's been some vitriol a little bit with Texas and because uh, of the Sark situation, because a lot of people thought Sark would be a candidate for the job. He really wasn't. He was comfortable with what he's building in Austin. But a lot of people still love what he did at Alabama. But I think they're excited about the new challenges of the SEC and, and the new expanded playoff because there's more margin for – uh, error now. Certainly, Alabama fans are going to want to win every game. If they look, man, you, I think you asked me uh, in in our first segment, you know, how much patience is there going to be with Alabama fans? Hey, man, first loss, <laughs> and a lot of times, but, the punt. Yeah. There's going to be there's going to be people complaining. I mean, uh, you, you would have thought Alabama um, lost the South Florida game with the way they played. A lot of people did not see this Alabama team last year recovering the way they did and becoming a playoff team and certainly not beating Georgia. So uh, the, the patience is is going to – there's not going to be much, but I think they're excited. They're fired up. I think, you know, Kalen DeBoer has a different way of connecting with people. He's a really personable guy, though. Nick Saban was more of a business approach. Certainly behind the scenes, uh, you know, he 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 uh, he connected with donors and boosters and, and supporters. But Kalen DeBoer is much more open. He's made his coaching staff much more open. And I think the change has kind of re-energized the fan base. And I think with this realignment, I think everybody's excited. And they want to see how much damage the SEC can do in this college football playoff. The SEC dominated, uh, you know, the, the BCS. And that's why they changed it to the four-team playoff. And it didn't stop the SEC from <laughs> dominating there either. And I think they still believe that the Southeastern Conference – now the big question is, I know you mentioned it at one time, could there be four, could there be five in a year for the SEC? Could the SEC in, in, you know, have the entire Final Four one year? I, I think that's what a lot of fans are wondering yeah. and fascinated about. 
uh, with Texas and Oklahoma joining the conference. So from from an outsider's perspective, you know, Clemson and, and Alabama had some really great matchups. Oh, I don't really know how – I mean, you can correct me if I'm wrong. It didn't seem like a lot of vitriol, though, because it was always for, like, the national title. It seemed like just kind of a, a, a pretty fun, good-natured rivalry that seemed to happen, like, what – four out of five years or something like, and you knew like the winner each time of that was, was probably going to go on and win it. A couple of those happened in title games. One of them here in Tampa where I live. Um, so you had that Alabama Clemson, you know, I don't, again, I don't know if rivalry is the right word, but it just seemed like that, you know, that's the best word I can use for it for that five or six year period. And then you had, um, maybe an online rivalry with, you know, Florida state fans feeling jilted by the, by the playoff committee. And so they took that out on anybody they could, you know, anybody that would listen to them um, and, and blamed Alabama for not deserving to get in. And then just a few, a month later or so you, you had the rumors of Norvell being a final candidate and whether he was or wasn't, you know, Florida state fans like to say, Oh, you, you know, our guy turned you down. Alabama fans like to say, Oh, we, you know, we weren't even thinking about him. We, we, we would have never taken it. So anyway, all that said, the ideas of Clemson, Florida State, would Alabama fans uh, kind of hold Florida State, Clemson at arm's length, or would they want them in the SEC as well to, to bulk that brand more, or would they say, ah, send them up north to the Big Ten? Well, no, I mean, I, they would support it. I mean, uh, because, again, because the SEC is first and foremost a football league, and you're bringing in two brands. Mike Norvell's done a remarkable job, and – really probably doesn't get enough credit for the train wreck FSU was when he got there because of the end of the Jimbo era and then, you know, making the wrong hire uh, that they did, uh, you know, uh, and and then having for him to have to come in there and clean up after, you know, two eras that just didn't work. And so I, I just think uh, it, it, with what Mike Norvell has done in the portal and and I felt for Florida State, I mean, if, if they don't have the quarterback injury, I think they probably get in. I think that Alabama was still one of the four best teams. I think Georgia was, but I think that's why they've expanded the playoff. And in an sure. expanded playoff, even with the injury, FSU would have been in. Now, do I think FSU would have won the national championship even with a, a healthy football team? I'm probably not. But I think that they're now a relevant factor nationally and and are arguably the best program, and I think are right now in the ACC is good for college football. And I think Al, you know, Alabama fans, SEC fans, they would embrace Clemson. Uh, you already have South Carolina in the league. Uh, they would embrace FSU, no doubt about it. Uh, you know, and I, I think both those programs and universities probably would like to be in the SEC. And you're right, Alabama and Clemson had a great battle. Fifteen, it was they played for the national championship. Sixteen had a rematch. Seventeen, Alabama beat them in the semifinals, and then eighteen, another rematch in the national championship game. So for that four-year run, Dabo did an amazing job. Now it's going to be interesting to see if he can get it back because he hasn't embraced the portal as much. He hasn't embraced NIL. You kind of need to change, and 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 of course. Uh, the other connection is Dabo's an Alabama guy. Everybody knows that. He went to Alabama. And if you look at his infrastructure and his staff that he kept together for so long, so many have Alabama ties. And I think that's why it wasn't – I don't think there was – you're right. I don't think it was – there was any vitriol or anything. I think it was uh, just a, a mutual respect. And I think uh, there was a lot of anticipation because of what Dabo had done. And I think a lot of people, including myself, were surprised. I mean – he got – it's so funny because I told people that it, Dabo has, has, has forged out a Hall of Fame career, but he owes it to Nick Saban because if Nick Saban doesn't embarrass Tommy Bowden in 08, when people forget all the way back then, Alabama was an underdog. They were uh, just a, a fledgling top 25 team because they did not finish those seven season very well. And Clemson had all the expectations with C.J. Spiller and all those guys, but yet Alabama goes out there and smashes Clemson. By the you know uh, a few weeks later, they dismissed Tommy Bowden and they put uh, Dabo as interim coach. And I don't know if anybody thought he would last, and yet he was able to survive and then thrive. And now both Clemson and Florida State are thriving. I mean, I think they're the two best programs in the ACC. And I think if if realignment is going to continue, uh, I don't think there's any question about it. The way uh, the the TV money is is evolving. I, the ACC is trying to hold it together, but uh, I think we've seen everything going on behind the scenes. I think uh, at Florida State and Clemson definitely would like to move on, and they haven't been invited by the SEC, but I think if the, the fans of uh, the Southeastern Conference would certainly uh, open their arms and be open to 
uh, adding brands like Florida State and Clemson, which would make it an even tougher league. But, you know, uh, it certainly would add more spice to it, no question. You, you mentioned something, um, and I've got two, two thoughts there, and then I'll ask you one more and we'll get out. But one, we talked about in a, in a video to, be, uh, to come out later. So if you're watching this, hit the subscribe button and, and come back and watch it. But we talked about part of the reason for, for Saban maybe stepping away was uh, just having to rebuild that staff year over year over year. And, and when we were doing that, we were talking about that earlier today, I thought about Coach Bowden at Florida State yes. and, and how Great. Chuck Amato stayed there forever and Mickey Andrews stayed there forever. And and that just doesn't happen in today's Mark Rick, football. He was there a lot. Yeah, Rick was there so long. And um, Dabo actually had that too. And as much as people want to point to the portal or the fact that he's quirky and says like, you know, we built this on Jesus's name, image and likeness, not, you know, like people want to point to all that stuff. But like, I really think a lot of the problem is just, you know, they're, they're having that. It's hard to hire. And, and it's really that. As impressive as the recruiting is, as impressive as the titles are, I mean, nothing's going to trump the titles. As, as impressive as everything Saban did, the fact that he continued to churn out elite coordinators over and over, that's probably the most underrated thing that he did. And, and it's its not something that people aren't aware of. Like, it's not underrated in the way that, like, no one respects it. But to me, that's even more impressive than really anything else he did. And so maybe that's some of the – not maybe. That is certainly some of the issue with Dabo is, is can he get back to that? Can he make – you know, you're not, he's not going to have a Brett Venable stay there that long again. He's not going to have an Elliot. Like you're going to have to hire over and over and over again. And, and can he be um, elite at that? The other thing that I thought quickly when you were saying that was, uh, you know, we talked about Texas, Oklahoma. Is that a welcome challenge? I agree with you. you again, in another video, you said you got Oklahoma, like maybe middle of the pack. I, I kind of view them as maybe a, a, a spot or two under like where LSU is. Maybe like right in that Ole Miss category, you know, this year uh, Ole Miss is a little elevated, but yeah, not not in your top like three or four or five. Um, and I, and I, that's probably where I'd have Florida State Clemson, like right around that LSU. I mean, you've seen LSU, Cl Florida State go back and forth the last couple of years. I, I don't think Florida State would be in your, you know, Alabama, Texas, Georgia category, but they'd probably be, you know, maybe just a, just a, around that Oklahoma, maybe a, a tad higher. Um I don't think that that presents a massive problem for the Alabamas and the Georgias of the world. I think that presents a massive problem for who we just mentioned, the LSUs, the uh, Ole Misses, the Floridas, you know, when, when they've got things going right, Tennessees, because you're adding, and, and then certainly, you know, under them, the, the Mississippi States and the, the Vandys and South Carolinas. But I, you know, I, at that point when you're one of those programs, you know, what's even matter? Um, I, you know, that, that's who I think it presents a, a problem for if more, you know, good to above average teams are added it doesn't, you know, it doesn't make it a little bit harder for Georgia. Yes. Does it make it a little bit harder for Alabama? Yes. But I don't think their place in the SEC is uh, going to be unseated. I think it makes it harder for those mid-level to lower level teams to ever think that, you know, they're going to consistently win. Well, and you have to be committed. And Florida State's, I mean, I know they've, they've made, uh, you know, uh, no bones about that they were upping the, you know, and that's how they've kept Norvell. They were, they were spending more money. They knew they had to, uh, become an organization football wise. They knew they had to upgrade their facilities because when Coach Bowden was there, uh, he he had a way about him. You know, he he could connect with people. But you know, Florida State wasn't still wasn't known for sp you know spending. They they were very blessed to have Coach Bowden, who was ahead of his time, who kept his staff together, uh, and who and he made a shrewd move. He could have gone to the SEC in '92, but he didn't. He went to the ACC because let's be frank, it gave him an easier path, and it worked. I mean, because they won a national championship in 93, they won it in 99. And he, of course he could take on the SEC, but he'd rather wait and do that in a bowl game and not have to navigate that. But now with the changing, uh, you know, the, uh, just the, the, just uh, the overall, just the, 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 where we are in collegiate athletics, money is what drives it and TV yeah. money and conference. And that's why Florida state, uh, ideally Florida state and Clemson, if they had a better TV deal, they wouldn't want to move. But right now, the ACC is kind of caught in, in the in-between, and that's why there's a lot of speculation about that. And it'll be fascinating to see where it goes. Uh, you know, it, And, you know, I, I've had to reprogram myself because I never thought I would see USC, UCLA in the Big Ten, Washington, <laughs> Oregon. But that's just where we are now, and it's going to be interesting to see, you know, what the ACC does to continue to try to enhance their – money situation what the big 12 does and what greg sankey does because again he he did not let anybody know that he was about to poach texas and oklahoma and he did it and so we will see uh, I'll, I'll i'll i will be frank 
if I were Greg Sankey, and I've said this, I, I, I would be looking to move into different states instead of Florida State and Clemson. And it's not a disrespect. I respect their football brand immensely, but it's become about like TV sets. You'd be talking about trying to dominate in basketball and bringing in blue bloods like Carolina and Duke. And then you would still have football would still be number one, but it might not make that path as difficult. But then you're talking about Florida State and Clemson maybe ending up in the Big Ten or the Big 12. So there's going to be a lot of dominoes to fall. But football wise, I do think that Florida State and, and Clemson would be welcomed. And I think they would be perfect fits. And quite frankly, I, I'm surprised. Maybe, you know, back 25 years ago that this didn't happen. So it could have happened for Florida State, but Clemson wasn't really looking to move. But those dominoes are going to be very, very interesting. And I'll just say this, too, as I as we're wrapping up, though. The, another thing that Nick Saban did that you, you, you pointed out, replacing his coordinators repeatedly and staying at a high level, he also saved some coaching careers because if he yeah. doesn't throw a lifeline to Lane Kiffin or Steve Sarkeesian, Sorry, yeah. Neither one of them are where they are now, both with teams that many people believe are going to be in the college football playoff this year. Yeah. So we'll wrap up with this. If you uh if you're you mentioned if you're Sankey, maybe you look basketball. So you you get you get two programs to add. You can you can split, you can go, you know, Florida State UNC, or you can go UNC Virginia or UNC Duke or Clemson and one of the like you you're adding two teams today. Um I know you you said you lean basketball, but is it Carolina Duke or who are your two teams? Carolina Duke, just because I think the football brand is already the strongest in the country. The baseball brand is already the strongest. Uh, you know, the softball basketball might be. It's pretty strong. close. Strong. Yeah. If, so if you have with what Alabama and Auburn are doing in our state now, and they've reached heights that we've never seen, you've already got Kentucky, who's Arkansas, always going to be a Florida, blue blood. Yeah. You got Cal at Arkansas now. You know he's going to win. And then you add Carolina and Duke, who are two of the, you know, the bluest of the top five blue bloods in college basketball. You're talking about how much money you could demand. And then again, Carolina football is pretty good. Duke's, eh, you know, it's it's started to show signs. It's not going to enhance your football brand, but you're still going to have TV sets in those states, but it's going to enhance hoops. And then, and, and like I said, one of Sankey's first things that, and it's hard to believe he's already in his 10th year, TJ, as commissioner taking over from Mike Slide. When, when I've been in, and I, it's kind of coincided with my time in this business, but I'll never forget him sitting down at SEC media days. This was football media days, but saying the most important thing besides we know football drives the bus, but we've got to get basketball in a more prominent position. How much more prominent could it be if you poach North Carolina and Duke? Yeah. And like you just mentioned, uh, every other sport is is way way up there, uh, including adding uh, Oklahoma and Texas right now to the SEC in softball, which um, seems unfair Same. for every yeah. other conference. So, right, Drew, where can people follow you? Where can they find your work? Thanks so much for hanging out, man. Yeah, TJ, it's been an honor. Uh, yeah, they can they can find me at Drew D nine seven seven ESPN on X uh, nine seven seven ESPN for our station, uh, and they can find me uh, also. They can find our content on our SoundCloud page, 977ESPN.com. Also, 977ESPN.com, uh, uh, excuse me, for the website. And then 977ESPN, uh, the zone on the SoundCloud page. Pardon me. And, of, of course, uh, certainly uh, they can find our show 7 to 9 a.m. Scott Tyson and I bringing you Talking Ball Monday through Friday, 7 to 9 a.m. Central, 8 to 10 uh, Eastern. I know you're in the, the in Tampa, so it's Eastern time there. But uh, we love we love the interaction. We love being on, and appreciate you taking the time to talk some college football and some collegiate athletics, man. It's always great. Yeah, we're getting close, so I appreciate you for hanging out, man. You take care. Thank you, bud. Appreciate it.